Hello YouTube, it is Champion DJK coming at you again with another weekly episode, and I got kind of another odd one for you. I didn't really find anything in stores this week or anything like that, so I grabbed a bunch of stuff from over to my right here and uh, just went ahead and just picked out some stuff to show you. I've got some Inno64, this is like the only like newer stuff I really have here in the video, is uh, we got this Nissan... Um, Australian Special Edition Skyline GTS R. This thing looks pretty sick. This is a uh, Inno 64, and then I've got this uh, Safari Rally Kenya 1996 uh, Ford Escort RS Cosworth. These are pretty rad. Um, so Inno 64, pretty awesome. These are really cool, actually. So I'm excited to actually open up these. Uh, I got them from SC Diecast, my local pals. So they've been carrying Inno 64 now, which is really, really cool. So I can like get them from my local meets, which is uh, pretty, pretty awesome. All right. So we got those. Um, this other stuff, I don't really recall. I got a couple mainline Hot Wheels I just picked out that I, I don't know when I bought them. I have no idea. Um, it looks like we got a mix of A case, there's F case, there's a C case, and an international card. So, whatever. We've got a Ford Escort RS1600. We've got a 70s van, the super van. We've got Ford Escort RS2000. A Nissan Maxima drift car. And an Aston Martin Vantage GTE in kind of a, yeah, it is a golf livery. Golf. So, got that as well. Uh, so, we will look at those. We'll just open those up. Why not? I just picked out five random ones uh, just to go ahead and open, get it over with. And we'll go ahead and take a look at those. And then I've got a Matchbox 5-pack. I don't remember when I picked this up either. So it's been a while. Uh, this one has a Pontiac Firebird in it. It's got a stepside pickup. It's got a Ford Coupe, a Camaro, and a Hudson Hornet. So pretty cool there. I'm having some weird deja vu with this. Do I already have it? I don't know, but it's too late. We're going to go ahead and open it up. I'm not going to bother trying to hunt down this. I'm slowly trying to get a little bit more organized in here and uh, try to figure some stuff out with what I want to keep and what I want to get rid of. I, I've said that a lot, but uh, I have been gradually kind of putting a thing or two on eBay and kind of clearing out whatever some stuff. I just don't know. I just, I have to pare down eventually. Um, these two items I picked up, I believe, at the Hot Wheels convention. Again, still peppering in that major haul. Uh, a 69 Oldsmobile 442 and a Cadillac 1953 Eldorado. These are high-speed castings, or like the Malibu die-cast castings. These castings were, again, eventually used as green light in the Motor World series. So we got that one. We'll open these up and we'll take a, a better look at them. I just posted pictures of this casting to my Instagram, or one picture anyway. Uh, it's the green light version. It's a darker blue. This is more of a sky blue. So we will check this one out. Kind of a neat little casting. It's barely ever been used. So neither of these have really been used all that much. Uh, since they were created, but they're they're pretty nice. They're not too bad. Uh, so we got those to look at, and then I just picked out. I've got some random, weird, odd brand stuff sitting over here, and this one, no idea when I got it. Long time ago. It's a Tootsie toy. It's a Tootsie toy, and I'm just trying to see if it's got a name of the casting. It just says Tootsie toy in the bottom. It's a van. I think it's a Chevy or a GMC van. I don't think it is. I'm trying to see if it is um, licensed or not. Ford T Bird, Camaro Corvette, Corvette Division More, BB License Group. I'm trying to find uh, it on here, and I, I can't. I don't see it. So I have no idea. 
what exact model that is. Maybe we'll we'll discover when we open it up. Looks like they made a Porsche 959 right there, though. Might have to get that Tootsie toy. But it's on card. We'll check out the card. We'll open it. We'll we'll take a look at what that's all about. That should be fun. And uh, let's see what else we got. I got a oh, vintage Hot Wheels, an older Hot Wheels. California Customs Porsche P911. This thing is pretty awesome. I love the Cal California Customs look. It just, uh, this line of cars is just so period correct to the era that I kind of like grew up in. These bright neon colors and just, it was all the rage. So these things are really cool. And this P911 is, is awesome. I, I can't wait actually to open this one up. This is going to be really cool. I picked this one up at the convention as well. So we got that. All right. And then I got some Johnny Lightning to look at. We got this guy, little Z, Z car, not the greatest Z casting, not terrible though. I think I might have all of these, or pretty close to all of these now. I was missing this green one, so we will open that up. And then I've got from the Gold Series. Now this is not classic gold, this is Gold Series Muscle Cars Limited Edition uh, these come in a resealable clamshell pack. This was a someone bought this at Ollie's for a dollar ninety nine, so they scored on that. It's a '66 Pontiac GTO. This was like the high end Johnny Lightning retail wise. They came in an acrylic case. They're very detailed. It's a resealable uh, package. Very cool. Um, so just kind of stickered together with Johnny Lightning stickers and just really nice. Most of these are really, really nice. They're very highly detailed, all that good stuff. So we're going to open up this GTO and add that to the collection. And then I've got a Johnny Lightning Muscle Cars Pontiac Firebird 400 convertible, a 69 Firebird in yellow. So this is another one I just didn't have before I picked it up. So we're going to get that loose and get it in the Firebird collection. Okay, and then lastly, what I've got to look at are some older green light. I love older green light. Older green light stuff is pretty cool. Uh, it tends to be higher quality than kind of the new stuff. It just, there's something different about it. They feel different. The philosophy of making the castings, I think, was different. They were probably run by somebody else. They were probably designed by somebody else than designed for current castings. I don't know factually all of that information but these are all green post green lights this is what we call green post green lights green rivet they have one green rivet in the front which tells you that they're from the earlier days of green light these are all black bandits we've got some from series one like this 64 plymouth fury convertible limited to 4,000 pieces 4032 we've got a 65 chevy chevelle uh, limited to 4,032 pieces. This is from Series 2. We've got this Corvette. This is limited to 2,500 pieces. And I think this is before they did Series cars. So they just released limited edition Black Bandits. I think it might have been like a hobby exclusive. I'm not entirely sure, but it wasn't really in a Series. It says Corvette edition. But, I don't know, 2,500 pieces on that one. Oh, wait, and here's another Corvette edition. So these must have been in a set. Uh, 1960 Chevy Corvette Coupe, also limited to 2,500 pieces. So, we're going to take a look at all this stuff. Again, I, don't, I didn't get anything really that new. And really, there's nothing new that's been hitting my store. So, kind of been going through a dry spell. And that's the way it is. We'll kind of look at these. Maybe this will be the thumbnail. So maybe, I don't know. Yeah, it's going to have to be. All right. So nothing really new has been hitting the stores lately. I have been looking here and there. There just really hasn't been much. The newest Auto World set with the minivan, uh, not the newest, newest one that's like hitting hobby dealers now, but the one before that has been showing up. I haven't been lucky to find a minivan yet in store. So, but I already have that set. So when I do see it, it's not like it's going to be brand new. I'm trying to think if there's anything else that's really cool that's been hitting, and there just really isn't anything um, that I can think of. Not even really Hot Wheels. There hasn't been that many basic Hot Wheels. It's kind of been a very kind of a lull in uh, what's been hitting stores 
as far as my observation goes and in my area. But let me know how things are going for you. Uh, that's always interesting to hear. Let's go ahead and flip the camera around as usual. We're going to open up the stuff that we do have today to look at, and it should be kind of fun. So stay tuned. All right, so we're going to start the second half here today with uh, probably the two cars I'm the most excited about are these Inno 64. I've just uh, I've been loving what Inno 64 has been doing. Uh, they've been putting out some really cool cars. Uh, some of the stuff I haven't had too much interest in, but uh, there has been quite a few that I have been interested in, and they're just they're kind of expensive, so I haven't really picked up a ton of them. But when they're right there in front of you you know, in the flesh at your local meet and you don't have to order online and you're saving shipping and stuff like that. It, uh, it does, uh, you know, cause me to, you know, pull the trigger more than I would have otherwise. So, but, uh, here we go. So which one should we open first? Well, I already have a version of this casting. I did show you guys. But this is the uh, Escort, on the, in a previous video, this is the Escort RS Cosworth Repsol Safari Rally Kenyan 1996. Pretty neat. So standard, uh, if you're not familiar with the No 64, it's kind of the standard like premium, premium packaging where you get the acrylic case, you get a little cardboard bit, and there's lots of little itty bitty parts and stuff. So we are going to pull this off of the base uh, by unscrewing the one screw that is holding it there and being very careful not to knock those little antennas off of the car. Now, in 064, 64 uh, the current casting lineup is a metal body, metal base. So this thing actually has a metal base, which means it's got some good weight to it. And look at the details on here. we got a Ford logo right on the side mirror there. We've got the little, like, snorkel thing. This thing is so cool. We've got some reflectors on the windows, keeping the sun out of there. I imagine that's what that's for. Uh, N560 ear. And we got inserted details for taillights, of course. Inserted details for the headlights. And again, very detailed. Very, very detailed. Very well detailed. We got some exhaust. That little itty bitty antenna we got to be careful with. And this thing rolls. So, quite cool. Actually, is that like just like a brush guard up front? Yeah, I think it's kind of a brush guard. This is like your snorkel dealy thingy. Interesting. Very cool, like, representation of this rally car. And that's what Inno kind of does best is when they start doing, like, the liveries, the actual racing car uh, liveries. And they do a fantastic job detailing all these. It's actually quite a detailed interior. I don't know if we're going to be able to get you in there because most of the windows are covered up, but you can see it if we're at the right angle. Yeah, it's gonna be hard to see, but it's got a very detailed interior as well, even though you can barely see it. You can see it through the, the front windshield and that's about it. But very, very detailed indeed. Great job on this casting. They did a fantastic job. As always, on their newer stuff, any newer casting or tooling from Inno has just been quite fantastic. So this is no exception. I really do like it. So we're going to go ahead and set that aside. And look at the next one. The next one is this Australian Special Edition Nissan Skyline GTSR. HR31 number two, Nissan Motorsport Australia Bathurst uh, Tui's 1000 1989. I'm not much of a racing connoisseur, so I really don't know anything about this uh, particular real car or what it represented. But we get some clues on the package here. 
that must be the track or the, the thing, the distance, uh, 6.213. I don't know if that's 6.213 kilometers or, or what exactly that is, but uh, pretty nifty. I'm not a racing aficionado. I'm not really a car aficionado either, even though I collect all these little toy cars. But, you know, we've talked about that in the past. I just like the way these little things look. <laughs> and I'm, I'm still fascinated by it, even though I don't like watch a ton of racing or, or anything like that. So I'm not a snobby car guy, I guess. <clears throat> That's how we'll say that. All right. So this thing, again, just like any in a 64 these days, is just supremely detailed metal body, metal base. Uh, this casting is screwed together. It's on slicks. It rolls pretty good. We've got side mirrors. We've got those little tiny antennas that you got to be very careful of. we got these tow hooks that you really got to be careful of. Tiny, tiny, tiny little guys there. Jeweled head lights, jeweled uh, tail lights. Again, that little tow hook you got to be careful of. Uh, accurate graphics, from what I understand. See, I don't really know for sure, so I guess it's not factual. We got a uh, reflective sticker on the back of the side mirrors, which is also a nice touch, and quite a detailed interior, again, on this piece. So these things are beautiful. They're little works of art. And I, I really do enjoy them. I just really like what Inno's doing these days. I think they do a fantastic job of these little 164 scale cars and making them as detailed as possible. And the quality control seems to be pretty darn good on current releases. So I, I think they're way better than the older, the older Inno's. I think they just really improved with time. And they do a fantastic job of, with their newer castings. Some of the older ones, I wasn't a huge fan of. These newer ones, though, I must say, they become a, a favorite brand of mine. So quite like them. Quite like them indeed. So I'm going to go put that in safe place for now. And what should we look at next? Well, let's look at these boxed, these weird box cars. And I don't really know, again, what their purpose was or what they were made for. I don't know if these were just made as a GM. So this is a GM official licensed product. They're both GM cars. Oh, it says Research Digest Association. So maybe these came with like a magazine or something. I have no clue the origin of these. Uh, so, and I didn't bother trying to figure it out either. So it's not like I really worked hard to try to find out for you guys. But this is what they are. They come in this box. They're GM. I don't know how many more of these or more castings were used, but here's the Cadillac, the 53 Eldo. I'll just kind of put that back. We'll save that little box. So here it is. Now these have uh, painted details, headlights and taillights. So no extra pieces and parts. It, they do have rubber tires. They have a plastic base. It's a riveted together car. It rolls really nice. And this casting ended up getting used in at least one release of Greenlight Motor World. So the tooling was used for Greenlight at one time. And maybe it says high speed. So high speed copyright date high speed made these toolings i have no idea really the origin of them either it's kind of a weird history between like them and malibu die cast and then those toolings were used as green lights and just really weird little history but this thing does look pretty nice i do got quite a collection actually of high speed toolings and maybe eventually i should do a standalone video on those. This is the 69 old 442. And again, I believe this was also released as a green light at one time. Same sort of deal, plastic base, metal body, rubber tires, painted details for headlights, taillights, trim, and all of that. 
but here's this casting and it does look pretty detailed we got a little paint flaw up here you know pretty decent version of this 442 and again i believe it was released in at least one release of motor world it might have been two pretty sure it was used as a green light you guys will let me know if I'm wrong, if any of you know about it. But I'd like to dig into maybe the history of this high-speed stuff and what these castings or toolings were made for or used for, or if they just kind of like, I don't know, if they were a company that was commissioned to make little cars. I have no idea. I have no clue. And, uh, you know, I just, I kind of look for these or look for weird um, semi-premium die casts and anytime I see stuff like this and it's like a decent price, I can just pick it up. I snag them because they're interesting. They're different, you know, than what you can just find in the store today, right? So there's that. All right. Uh, let's look at this bad boy right here. We've got the California Custom Hot Colors and Sizzling Styles for the most from the coast. California Custom. This is when California was like super cool, all right? Just the uh, wild colors. Uh, these came out, I'm trying to think here. Well, 1989 is the copyright date, so we'll just say 1990. They're the coolest cars from the coast, collect them all. Wild Wave Stunt Set was also available at the time, it looks like. And all the graphics on these are just wild. Kind of a Spectra Flamish paint like a mirror finish on this thing. I don't think the finish on these aged all that well. So sometimes you will get flaws. I don't know. What is this? Not sure. Is that supposed to be like a bookmark or something? Not sure. It looks kind of like a Frisbee, but Cal custom. So there's that. And, uh, Looks like we got some speed points. This was cool. I wonder who's got that Hot Wheels TV compact five inch TV set. Speed points. We've seen that. It's a lot of older packaging Hot Wheels from that era. Uh, it looks like we've got some decals. So a little sticker, there's smiley face, some flames, turbo, turbo, arrow, Cal custom, hot surf. Welcome to Beverly Hills. I'm not sure if you'd use those on the casting itself, but uh, here is the car. So this paint was interesting. It was a mirror finish, but it definitely like scratches and gets flaws very, very easily. And that's why you got that there. That's from Packaging Rub uh, right there as well. So that is common for these. It's really hard to find... Uh, these like an absolute pristine perfect condition where the paint is absolutely perfect and flawless So this will have to work for me. It's a blister pull And it's as good as it's gonna get for me uh, These wheels are Wacky they weren't used too much, but they were used uh, a few times. They were used in the early treasure hunt series I think as well these weird spiral wheels they're like a, I think they're like a two-piece wheel, maybe a three-piece wheel, I don't know. But yeah, crazy uh, mirrored purple, pinkish color with some neon stuff going on, fluorescence, and uh, it, overall, it's kind of an interesting look for this car, so I like it. I'm glad I got this thing. Uh, any of these Cal Customs of castings that I like, they're kind of expensive when you do find them. Uh, but they are cool to get, especially cool to get a blister pull one, even though you're still going to probably have some flaws. That's just the way it goes for this stuff. Sometimes keeping cars in the package isn't exactly the best way to protect them, unfortunately. And that's just the way it is. Some things will never change. All right. So hard body die cast metal tough Tootsie toy for ages over three. Be frank. Well, I'm going to be frank with you. I don't know what that is. Uh, 89 cents, although, is what this cost. You can collect them all if you wish. Again, look at that. I think that's a Porsche 959 there. That would be cool to get. Testarossa. 
Uh, what else do we got there? Is there like a, there's a BMW, Corvette, Camaro, oh, a Nissan, Z. So pretty cool. Uh, oh yeah, year 1992 copyright date on that. Strombecker Corp, Illinois. This is a Dodge van, or is this? It's kind of got a Ford GMC look to it for some reason to me. Oh, somebody will make a fool of me and tell me what this is in the comments. It doesn't say. It's not pictured on the back. And I don't see any, like, trademark information or anything on the actual casting itself. It rolls pretty good. Metal body, plastic base. It's got, like, some sort of suspension going on with these little plastic tabs, but you don't want to push on those hard because those will break. And I think as a kid I broke a bunch of them. We got some weird, wacky art direction with this thing, but kind of appropriate for the time. So, yeah, that's that's that. Not sure what else to say about that one, but uh, this is kind of your cheaper, not Hot Wheels, not Matchbox from that era. But, yeah, kind of cool to pull a little, you know, blister pull, this little Tootsie Toy. Tootsie Toys, I think, used to be more of a popular thing back in, back in the way early days of uh, die cast and stuff like that, the old metal Tootsie Toys. But, uh, yeah, it looks like they did a little foray into some sort of one, you know, three-inch model or whatever you want to call it with these little cheap things. Kind of got like the Yat Ming style wheel. So this might even be a Yat Ming tooling. I have no idea. Again, the history of die cast and the reusing of toolings and the cannibalization of brands and stuff like that. Really hard to kind of keep track of. And then we got this five pack from Matchbox. And let's open up that. Let's make a mess of the packaging. I don't know how these people open these things up and return them to stores. I just make a mess of it every single time. I have a feeling I already have this pack open somewhere. And it would be on account of this Firebird. Because this would be the one reason why I'd really want to pick this up. Because I collect this casting to a degree. And we got a nice pretty blue Firebird formula. Very, very cool. So that's like the main reason for picking it up. It's a nice basic matchbox. Firebird. And step side's kind of nice too. Not bad. Nice little basic model. Looking good. Uh, the Hudson in police or sheriff livery. Not a lot, not a bad look for this casting either. So pretty basic, but not too bad. Uh, we got a convertible Camaro in red. Nice little basic model. Again, a uh, nice graphical representation of the taillights and the headlights on this model. It looks pretty good. Not quite up to like exactly some standard of, of, uh, of Matchbox because some of them look a lot better than this, but this does look pretty good. And then lastly, we got this coupe, Ford coupe. And this thing is pretty, actually pretty sick looking as well. I think if I was to get back in customization again, I would get into making rat rods. And that would be kind of a cool one to kind of, I don't know, even make it look even dirtier and rustier. Maybe chop the top on it. I don't know. It would look kind of cool. So that's a pretty nice little guy as well. All right. Moving on from that. Um, what do we got? We've got we've got some mainline cars. We might as well just blow through these real quick. we got the Aston Martin Vantage GTE in a Gulf livery. I'm kind of steering away from getting stuff in golf livery, but I don't know. I just keep picking it up anyway, and I thought this car looked pretty nice in it, so I ended up snagging it. It's not the best tooling ever uh, from Hot Wheels, but it's not terrible. We got the Nissan Maxima Drift car. Newer tooling. Kind of looks cool. Kind of an interesting uh, livery on it, or graphical design. It's got these new wheels. I think these are brand new to this year, 2023. These tri-y spoke wheels. 
casting is kind of neat. It's got that glass uh, cover for the engine that's kind of goofy, but I guess it's I guess it's something that does actually happen. And uh, it it's kind of a neat. And that looks pretty good. It looks pretty good. It's reminding me of the Mad Menga. Ford Escort. I like this casting. This is new for 2023. I think I've already opened it in a different color. A newer color. Uh, this one, not much for detail up front, but we got the side details and the rear details, which is good that they actually did the rear detail instead of the front de detail. I think it does better for this particular casting. Mixed wheels. Overall looks pretty nice. Uh, sticking with escorts. We got the RS1600. This thing's been around for a while. This casting has been around. It started its life off in the main line as a Fast and the Furious branded vehicle. Or licensed vehicle. But in this regular main line. We've seen some premium versions of it. This casting's been around for a little while. Where's the copyright date on it? 2014. So like this came out like right around the time I really started collecting. So that's why I really remember the casting and kind of when it came out and all that stuff. And I thought it was really cool. That's a cool little piece there. All right. So that is our, well, we got one more super van, seventies van, super van. It's gone under a couple of names. It's a Dodge. This is in the uh, Art Car series. Of course, when they do this, they uh, are one letter that's focused on that they uh, have. This has kind of got like a word search thing going on. So it says Mattel, Hot Wheels, Cars. This was released in a couple colors. I think white. It was released as a Zamac, I think, as well. I don't think I have that one. We'll have to pick that one up. And then this one in uh, Metal Flake Dark Blue. Very dark blue. Okay. All right. So and there we go. That's, uh, we're going to end the day, I think, with these Black Bandit cars. So I think what we'll look up next here is going to be Johnny Lightning. So we got different flavors of Johnny Lightning here. We got the small card, cheaper version Johnny Lightnings. This is the 1981Z car. This is Playing Mantis era. So not Tommy era small card, but Playing Mantis era small card. And. Uh, copyright date on these, 1999, Playing Mantis, so it's older. The Nissan Z car. So, from a detail standpoint, this casting is actually really good. From a proportion standpoint, it would be really good if they wouldn't have over-exaggerated or made like those mixed size wheels. Like if they would have put, they put a small wheel up front, a big wheel on back and kind of this big wheel arch in there that gives it this exaggerated look. If it didn't have that, this casting would probably be really, really awesome. It's still pretty cool. It's a good representation, I guess, of the vehicle other than that. The details on it other than that are actually quite good. So it's just this exaggerated look, but uh, I collect this casting. And I think I have pretty much almost every one that has come out. I might be missing one or two. I'm going to have to go back and look. But I knew I was missing a good version of this green one. And now I have that checked off the list. It's always fun to check, check those off the list. All right. I think we need scissors for the rest of this video. Uh, so we got that guy, the Johnny. The next one we'll look at is this Firebird. This is a 69 Pontiac Firebird 400 convertible. Limited edition, this is RC2 era. 2006 is the copyright date on this one. Again, history of Johnny Lightning is also somewhat confusing. Between all the different eras of Johnny Lightning. Got this card here. Playing Mantis, RC2, Tommy. And round two. But uh, here's this Firebird. This is a casting I collect, of course, because it's a Firebird. And I just did not have this one. This one does have rubber tires, metal body, metal base. 
opening hood on this casting. Painted details for headlights and taillights. It's probably fairly close to actual 164 scale, this one is. The only other 69 Firebird I know of that I have that's uh, would be Auto World, and I think it's fairly close in size. Hood shuts nice on this one, which is good. Pretty good version of this convertible. Rolls nice. And overall, it's a good looking version of this casting. Uh, there, this casting wasn't used a ton. There are a few variations of it, or, you know, maybe quite a few, but really wasn't used all that much. Neither really was this one. I mean, there's a few variations of this as well, but it wasn't really used a ton and I can't remember the last time that this casting was actually used has to have been a while so pretty cool little firebird there so I like that one and I like those wheels I think those wheels look pretty good all right and then lastly for for Johnny we've got this guy and this is the gold series so these were kind of a premium uh, Johnny lightning it came with a bonus display case with removable top and resealable clam pack, painted chassis with driveline detail. So that's the other little kind of like bonus feature of these. I'm just gonna cut this sticker because I really don't want to peel it. And again, resealable clamshell packaging. So this is kind of like a best of both worlds packaging. You get the, the acrylic case and you get the resealable clamshell. We can pop that open. I'm not going to save the clamshell. I will save the acrylic case. Uh, Date-wise, we're looking at... Where are you? Mm -mm -mm. 2006. So here is your GTO. So it comes in an acrylic case again, and we'll pop that open. Funny thing is what I actually reuse these acrylic cases for, because I don't use them for these cars. These cars store easily without having to have an acrylic case. But what doesn't is when you have a Kyosho that's missing its blister pack. The base from a Kyosho fits right inside of these. So that's what I end up saving them for. And then I display Kyosho in them. So I know it's kind of weird, but it is what it is. And then uh, the Johnny Lightnings I keep together on display in Plano cases is just easier that way. Uh, opening hood on this one with some details in there underneath the hood. Again, here's your detailed drive line, so that that's an added little bit. You don't see that on pretty much any Johnny Lightning. Typically does not have any paint or detail on the base. Typically it's just a metal base. So that is an added feature of this. And then we've got, you know, your kind of standard uh, Johnny Lightning details all around. It is metal body, metal base, rubber tires, it rolls nice, and it generally just looks like a really nice stock version of this GTO. So you cannot go wrong with that Gold Series. If you see those Gold Series cars and they're cheap, you should pick them up because they're really nice. All right. All right, all we got left now is green light, older green light, black bandit cars we'll start with the corvettes we have four total cars here this one's limited to 2500 pieces the packaging on this is roached it's all yellowed and stuff these uh we're gonna say came out around 2009 is my estimation we'll pull out both corvettes this one is the 60 Corvette Coupe, and then I've got a modern Corvette, 2007 Z06, also limited to 2,500 pieces, also came out, looks like 2008 or 2009, so I don't know if these came out in a set of six cars, I actually have no idea, but there they are. Alright, so these two, we got a gloss black. And again, here's that green rivet that I was talking about. And we got some packaging rub on this. And that's what I'm talking about. That's why you got to kind of maybe remove your cars from the package. 
be a loose collector. Join the dark side. I think this thing has a, uh, I think this thing has an opening hood, but I can't get it open and we're not going to really struggle with it because I hate struggling with hoods. It's a nightmare. And no, I don't have a guitar pick on me. A thin guitar pick, you know, that probably would help. But I don't even know for sure if that opens, so. Uh, these were individually numbered. This is number 145. It's a pretty low. Casting uh, was tooled 2007, it looks like. Uh, tooling number 17C, so it's an earlier one. And it kind of looks awesome, and it's all black. It looks actually really cool. But the packaging rub on this gloss paint, you know, it's been sitting in the package for a long time, and it moves kind of back and forth like this. I believe that's what causes it, and, you know, it's probably been sitting out, who knows, somebody had this for sales, in and out of car shows, and stuff. who knows. And then here's this guy, this is kind of interesting, it's kind of a, a flat black or matte black. Number 2139, again, there's a green post, uh, casting number, tooling number, if we can find it is zero zero eight so very early tooling and i think this one also has an opening there it is easy to get on that one nice details under there too and there's your headlights it is a, a lensed headlight with paint on it not the best looking inserted headlight but it's there this one rolls really nice as well so kind of cool yeah older green light again Neat, neat pieces. It's got side mirrors, too, that are metal, that are part of the casting itself. Good shape on that one. All right. And then we got a couple of muscle cars here. We got a 65 Chevy Chevelle and a Plymouth Fury convertible. They're not really muscle cars, I guess, but whatever. Anyway, uh, <laughs> Series 2. We'll open up that car first. I think I might already have one of these loose, but it's like not in good shape. And then I actually had two of these carded and I had to pick one. I picked one with the worst card to open. The other one's going to come to a monthly meet with me. Uh, this one should have an opening hood, I believe. Yep. Decent detail under there. The Black Bandit series is kind of cool from Greenlight. I like the ones, too, that don't have the Black Bandit, like, logo everywhere. This one's got it on the side, but it looks fine. Some of the releases had a uh, kind of an egregious use of it. This has got those old green light steamroller tires. Way out of proportion, these thick boys. And uh, 833. Number on the bottom there. And Chevy Chevelle. Looks pretty nice. Convertible. And then lastly, we've got this one that looks really cool. This is a Plymouth Fury convertible. 1964 in Black Bandit Series 1. And hood's open right away on that one. Looks pretty awesome. 388, uh, tooling number 24. What was the tooling number in this one? 27. Steamroller tires again, big, big thick ones. But yeah, that's a cool looking car. Cool looking release. So very, very neat. And that's going to be it for this episode. So yeah, again, eh, kind of a weird one. Kind of a weird one. But kind of cool as well. I think the best cars we looked at were the Inno 64. That's my opinion. These black bandits, though, are really cool. And, of course, uh, getting this old school Hot Wheels is really neat. And the GTO is really cool. So, digging it. All right. Thank you guys very much for watching another weekly episode. Got some more stuff to show you next week. So, hopefully you enjoy it. And uh, thank you again. Have a great day.